Hey, everybody, Dr. Ellen here, the Midlife Whisperer. Thank you so much for joining us. If it's your first time, welcome. I am thrilled you're here. If you were a turn listener, thank you so much. I would love it if you left me a review. Let me know what you think about the show. And today, I'm always excited, but today we are talking about love, love, love. And really, who doesn't want more love in their life? How is your love life? That's a question I have for you. Are you really enjoying loving yourself, having a partner in your life, or you're still going like, what is a love life? Perhaps you're maybe in a marriage that's not working well and you want some ideas to rub up romance, or perhaps you are looking for the man of your dreams. Well, today's show is going to help you out. And I'm here to say that midlife romance and love is absolutely awesome. It's very different than the way you felt in your 20s or teens. But, you know, as Richard Evans puts it, love in its truest form is not the thing of starry-eyed or star-crossed lovers. It is far more organic, requiring nurturing and time to fully bloom, and as such seen best not in its callow youth, but in its wrinkled maturity. And as someone who is kind of in my, getting to my wrinkled maturity and has a new wonderful love in my life, I think today is like day eight, 15, but who's counting of not relationship? I'm here to say that I am just so in love and so super happy. And on today's show, we're talking all about midlife love, how to find it and nurture it. So whether you're in an established relationship or looking to meet the love of your life, today's show is going to provide you with powerful steps to enhance romance. We are talking with Dr. Diana Kushner. She is author of the bestseller, Love in 90 Days. She's got a new program coming up that is absolutely free. We're gonna get into that. And we are talking to pop-up chef, CEO, and cookbook author, Elise, Alicia Shevatone, who is going to share her reinvention story and the secrets to staying happily married and in love. So why don't I share briefly my story? Because Dr. Diana, and she didn't even know that before we talked, I met Dr. Diana, uh, in March, right, right around COVID time, right, right before lockdown, I was doing a summit and I invited Dr. Diana to talk and share her wisdom around love. And so at that point in time, I was divorced and I made the big mistake. I shacked up with rebound guy. And as Dr. Diana explains in her book, he was a slacker with an alcohol issue and it was great until it wasn't. And so there I was like stuck in COVID with this guy. And I finally, I tried to move out and I couldn't because I couldn't get a moving truck. That was, that was April. And then finally in June, I was able to move out, get my own place. And I would say, first of all, if you're going through divorce separation, take a little time before you date. Don't check up with Rebound Guy. Not a good idea. I learned my lesson, but I grabbed her book. And I followed her program. And, and basically, I first of all, I did her manifestation miracle exercise. I discovered my diamond self. And then the big thing for me was I used her a program of three. And I ended up dating three Aquarius engineers. I found them all through a spiritual singles match did not work for me. It was too overwhelming. And I, I just Googled, like, there's got to be a date site for people who are interested in spirituality. And so Kenny shows up as our first date. I really liked his voice and he, he was local. The other two guys were not local. Um, he lived about 40 minutes away on an island uh, in Lake Champlain. He shows up at my doorstep with a cooler filled with food that he had grown. And I'm a nutritionist and I wanted to, uh, like community supported agriculture. I was going to sign up I'm for that. I'm always at farmer's markets. And here he shows up with this big cooler filled with, I think he had squash blossoms and we made zoodles and we made, uh, he had a cauliflower and he actually bought me basil for pesto and get this two dozen long stem roses. First date, I, you know, and I was just, we had so much fun and it was awesome. And I, I kept dating. I followed Dr. Diana's advice. I had some really terrible dates. I dated this guy. I called him um, burrito guy. We showed up at the restaurant and he wanted a breakfast burrito without cheese or eggs. I dated a couple of losers and I, you know, kept those other dating things going. And then I was like, Kenny's the one. And uh, I moved out to North Hero where I live now. And I really... 
I thank Dr. Diana for her wisdom book. I lean into something so different. I didn't lean into the hot, lusty sex, what we're told we're supposed to lean into. I leaned into one of my core values. Like I wanted a guy who was spiritual, successful, sweet, and healthy. Kenny is as healthy as I am. And we, we grow all of our own food. We hike, we kayak, we bike. I kid you not, about a month into our relationship, he bought me a tandem bike. So we bike all over the islands on our tandem and it's so much fun. So I'm here to say midlife romance is awesome. There's no kids, you know, it's just two incomes, double incomes, no kids. We both have kids from former marriages, but no, you know, you don't have kids. You're not worrying so much about the finances and those kinds of things. You're not worrying about like the house. You're kind of established. You know yourself. Hopefully you love yourself. And it's like, our relationship is like, it's got three, you know, three wheels. It's like, we both love ourselves and are working on our stuff and we know ourselves. And then we have this beautiful, um, precious thing, our relationship that we nourish and we, and we work on and we just love each other and having so much fun. So I'm so excited to uh, introduce Dr. Diana. She has been on Oprah. She stars in an Amazon Prime show, Love in 90 Days. Her bestseller, Love in 90 Days, which I heartily endorsed, was so successful. It was used by um, Hodu, Hoda Kotabi of the Today Show and literally tens of thousands of others to find lasting, passionate love. Dr. Diana's website is Love in 90 Days, and it's a leading source of empowerment dating and love advice for women of all ages and welcome and thank you so much you didn't know my story oh my god I have the chills I have the chills I have to say Dr. Allen I, it's like I'm so over the moon I mean to hear your story it never gets old for me it's like we've held tens of thousands of women but it never gets old for me it's just so dear it's so sweet and it's so precious and, you know, and love at midlife is better. It's just better. You know who you are. You know what you want. <laughs> you, know, you know, right? Uh, and yet you can find the kind of love that is like the same as when you were a teenager. <laughs> I know. I'm kind of surprised at how much we feel that way. But there's so much... Um, we just adore each other, you know, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. just, there's so much also, not just the, you know, the dopamine and the sex, but really the um, oxytocin, that mammalian, there's so much connection. There's so many points of contact. We never fight. We like the same things. We always have this ability to figure things out when we put our heads together and we work together as a team and it's beautiful. So let's start off by talking about, and I love that you use the word shop. Because it is a bit like that, right? Like you go shopping for shoes and clothes and cute stuff and cars. Like, let's talk about how do you shop for the best quality guys? Yes, yes, yes. Because this is really, really key. Because you can get so burnt out these days. There's so many apps. There's so many sites. And uh, the whole crowd can be extremely fickle and disappear. And, you know, just, you know, they're lying about themselves. And so it's very, very important to be able to know how to shop for a great match, to shop for Mr. Right. And um, you see what Dr. Ellen did. You see, she, she was on a, a boutique site, which I really, really like. I like boutique sites, you know, like Christian Mingle, Spiritual Singles, which is what Dr. Ellen used. Um, J date, um, you know, that kind of thing. It's very specialized and you can find people who are in the same valley with where you really understand each other. You know, you speak the same language, that kind of thing. And you have similar key values and dreams, you know, just like Dr. Ellen. And, uh, but in addition, I also like or Zeusk or Plenty of Fish. Um, because there you get the numbers, right? You get more, you know, get more matches. And if you're careful about the way you do your profile, you can still line up with somebody who's very sim simpatico, very, very simpatico. In addition, I like women to, and men, to date uh, offline, right? In real life, <laughs> and to find people in real life. And for women, I suggest they go to mentastic, what I call mentastic activities. Now, what are mentastic activities? <laughs> they are activities that you really enjoy, but they happen to have a lot of men in them. They just happen to have a lot of men, right? So 
Uh, it could be wine tasting, cigar tasting. And not jazzercise. Not, not jazzercise. Not jazzercise <laughs> because you're going to find the women. Not right. yoga, not necessarily personal growth courses because often it's 90% women, right? We yeah, want, I tell my clients to go to try meetup. I think meetup meet can be like fantastic. things like hiking is great. Yeah, but you want to look for fantastic meetups, right? So if you're into hiking or let's say triathlon training or whatever you're into that happens to have a lot of men. Men are uh, plentiful in, in investing and that kind of thing. You know, we had a woman in our program who went to a wine tasting event. She met two incredible guys. Uh, it was a very upscale event and she wanted someone who was more successful. Um, she met this guy who was extremely wealthy. She had an amazing time with him, which was fantastic for her and her self-esteem. And then she met, of course, the love of her life. The other guy was the love of her life. You know, this amazing Irish guy. They are having the time of their lives. And uh, they're planning these different trips. And they're actually going to be moving in together pretty soon. Um, so fantastic activities and shopping in one larger site and one boutique site. And when you do this kind of thing, you are just, you know, exponentially increasing your odds of finding that perfect match. And believe me, there is a lid for every pot. <laughs> there is <laughs> That's good to know. So when, if someone's listening, and, I, and I've had a couple clients with this issue, they're just scared. Yeah. If someone is scared to like, just even put themselves up there and write a profile or go to invent by themselves, what do you recommend for someone who's just got that fear block of, I'm just really terrified of doing this? Yes, yes. Well, you know, you want someone to hold your hand. You you really want someone to hold your hand. You want your best friend or, you know, someone who's really going to encourage you uh, to get out there. But there's nothing like someone holding your hand when you're afraid. And if you don't have anybody to do that, right, to sit down with you and, and help you write your profile. Uh, and by the way, if you, you pick up the book, Love and 90 Days, there's a lot of examples about how to write a profile that gets it raining, man. A lot of examples. <laughs> Uh, and we'll be talking about that in our free course, Find Mr. Right, also. Um, but, uh, you know, get somebody to hold your hand. Now, if you can't, you can't find somebody like that, that's when you really want to look into getting a coach who is going to be there with you, who really knows the road, by the way. Uh, the thing about getting a coach that you have to understand is that anybody can hang out a shingle and call themselves a dating coach. <laughs> Anyone can be a coach anywhere. It's it's why it's wild, wild yeah. west, and you have it's to be the wild educated. West. Right. So you need a coach who's actually gifted and has worked with many women who are familiar with the issues of midlife and beyond. I mean, you know, uh, that's very, very important. Um, so someone there will get you over that fear. It it really will. It really, really will. And I speak as someone who used to be a very phobic person. <laughs> I, I mean, I grew up, I think I told you, Dr. Allen, I, I grew up incredibly shy and actually to the point of being uh, socially mute. I couldn't speak to anybody. <laughs> well, that, that it, well, I would never say that about you now, Dr. Diana. So, <laughs> and I want to let people know too, and we'll talk about the course in a few moments, but the Find Mr. Right today, the link is in the show notes. So if you want to do it, it's a free course. I know you've got these lofty goals of getting a million people there. So it's it's amazing. So let's talk about... Uh, we talked about fear. What are some of the other unconscious issues, unconscious mistakes that sabotage any chance of finding lasting love? You call well, these the deadly dating patterns. Yes, what are the three yes, most common ones? Yes. Well, the, the, one of the most common is settling for crumbs, right? Settling for crumbs where, you know, he's not there on your birthday. He doesn't see you on the weekend. He rarely texts, you know, you go out, you have sex, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't, you know, have any closure in terms of getting back with you. Um, you know, and you, yet you think this is the best I can do. This is the best I can do. After all, you, you know, I'm old, I'm fat. And as we tell ourselves these horrible things, right? I'm over the hill. I'm damaged goods. I, I, <laughs> I can't, this is the best I can do, right? And that's a trap. That is a trap. You have no idea how well you can do. <laughs> and you also have no idea how amazing you are. I know for me, yeah. one of the things that really attracted Kenny was because I learned to love myself. 
Yes. And you have to become the woman you want to be in order to attract the right guy to love yourself. And that is nothing's more attractive than feeling confident and loving who you are. Yes, yes, yes. And that's, we have something called the diamond self work. And that's all about empowering yourself. And it's really fun. You give yourself nicknames like the chosen beloved goddess of light or amazing grace vivacious vixen saucy mace you just play with it (laughs) even though you're not feeling it right even though you feel like crap you may feel bad (laughs) but um you play with it you play with it and uh lo and behold very interesting things happen when you play with it you can make small decisions and take small actions that have huge huge benefits huge Yeah. And your mistakes don't have to, I'm always trying to help people let go. Right. So when people think that you don't have to repeat your patterns, the person that I fell in love with at 29 wasn't right for me at 59. Yeah. And so, you know, we all grow, we all change. You don't, you can learn from your mistakes and you don't have to repeat those patterns, but it starts with that. Like, I love this idea of the manifestation miracle that you have of just Becoming that diamond, feeling that, imagining yourself being happy. It's a really an inside out job. That's what I love about your book. You give people very practical, worldly things to do, but at the same time, you give people that inner law of attraction work, which is really the secret sauce. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that is really the powerful secret sauce. It definitely is. And once you do that and you, you know, let's say you give yourself an empowering nickname, just for the heck of it, you just do it. Then you can go shopping, you see, and you buy things that remind you of your diamond self nickname, right? And then you wear them when you're dating and you wear them when you're looking in the mirror. So you're telling yourself about your diamond self, who's of course the most important person, not the guy, not the guy or the guys. It's you. You are the most important person. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And that's just so cool about, I think what was changed for me with midlife love when I was in my twenties and dating you know, I had this myth from all the media that we watched that I was supposed to with someone who's going to complete me and it's going to be this fairy tale. And I had to, you know, have those endorphins and that dopamine and all of that. Like you describe in your book, like heroin or cocaine yeah. versus like, <laughs> let's like go shopping, right? I mean, well, a little bit of the dopamine squirt, but we don't want to feel that in that, that kind of like, addictive thing. Yes. You don't want to be sick with an, a love addiction. And, you know, and it's very easy to allow that to happen, you know, depending on, you know, who's manifesting in your world and what your history is. But uh, no, it's so, very, very important to really focus on yourself and love yourself. Okay. So, so expecting crumbs is number one. What are the other two most common, what you call the unconscious, the deadly dating patterns and unconscious yeah. mistakes yeah. people make? Yeah, well, uh, they, I'll make you love me. I'll make you love me. You pick somebody he's not really that crazy about. He's not really into you, but you know that you are perfect for him and you're going to do everything, right? <laughs> and it's going to turn it around. You're going to get him tickets to the playoffs. You're going to cook. You guys are cooked. You're going to cook. You're going to cook the most incredible meal. You're going to help him with his book, help him with his business. I've heard every story. <laughs> right help him in every way and he's gonna love you damn it right he's gonna love you right? but here's the problem you can't make anybody love you you can't right they either love you and they're crazy about you or they're not that's why i talk about the number one criteria to date anybody is he has to be crazy about you and that means he knows how great you are how terrific you are how unique you are right and he's eager to see you we want them to leave you <laughs> He shows up with a box of food he's grown himself and two dozen yes. red roses. <laughs> and insists on buying me the ring because he wants the commitment, which was oh. which was a good thing. I was a little commitment phobic after, you know, ma- marriage that didn't work. But yeah, so okay, so not accepting crumbs, not trying to get the guy to love you. And what's number three? Right. And number three really is the hermit pattern. That is letting your fear run the show. In other words, the hermit. You know, you don't get out there. You're on a site maybe, but you don't work it. You, somebody tries to set you up, but you're like, oh no, he's too short. You know, you have some complaints. You're always, you're right there negating any possibility because basically you're scared to death, but you're acting like a hermit. And when you're acting like a hermit, you know, you really can't get anywhere. 
Another way of acting like a hermit is not being real in, in your date, you know, with your date. You're not your real vivacious fun self, you know, you're, you know, you're a hermit, you're introverted and you're not there, not present. And so uh, being a hermit can really, can really sabotage. Stop yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So don't accept crumbs. Don't try to get him to love you and don't act like a hermit. Okay, so we talked about the three things you shouldn't do. So what are the three things women can do today to create more love in their lives? Besides yes. dating three people at the same time, which I, I love that because I was like, and Kenny was kind of pressured. It was, was super cute. And actually our first day, the second date, I brought him to um, my dearest friend was getting, she, they were redoing their vows. They were, you know, at 15 years. And so I brought him to her wedding and um, I had all my friends check him out. It's the right guy and all that. And then we, you know, we dated a bunch of times. I was still kind of dating everybody else. And he was kind of like really sweet about like, will you be my girlfriend? Um, and I made a commitment pretty fast, but it was super cute. So I think I follow that rule of three. What are other things that women can do today to create more love in their lives? Well, you know, there are simple things to get started today. Number one is smile and say hello to every guy you meet. You know, you never know when you could bump into Mr. Bright. You just never know. And uh, you want to be the change you want to see. You want to be loving. And, um, uh, you know, you can always, like, set a boundary if they're, you know, coming on to you and you're not really not interested. Uh, so smile and say hello. You know, if you happen to be, you know, out uh, in the grocery store or in the pharmacy, wherever you are, it's uh, very interesting to meet people around you. Very, very interesting. You know, we had one woman in the program. Her bike broke down. She was biking along the ocean and she smiled at a guy and said, you know, can you give me a hand? He helped her and the rest is history. They're now married. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> but that's so married. important too, because when you smile, you actually generate feel good chemicals. You look more attractive. I would say it add that too. You know, get a new stylist, hire a stylist or, I mean, stylist doesn't have to be super expensive. I've had a couple of people talking about fashion, but like get a new look, get your yeah. colors done, get a new yeah. hair color work. I mean, not that you shouldn't like love and feel good about yourself and yourself. I'm all about positive body image and all of that. But I think in midlife, sometimes we try to look like our 26 year old self instead of saying, you know what, this is I'm, I'm my best 50 year old self. So maybe work on, you know, getting an appearance that makes you feel confident, that makes you feel good in your skin. Buy yeah. a new outfit, right? Yeah. Get a new lipstick color. Get a new hairdo. Yes. yes, one that speaks to your diamond self, that speaks to your inner, you know, amazing diamond self. All right, so, two more. So we have like smile and say hello, which is going to make you feel good and more attractive and confident. What are two more things people can do? Okay, uh, you can make your love intention. You know, it, it's really easy to be feeling like nothing's happening. There are no good men out there. It's impossible, blah, 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 blah. Make your love intention. You change your 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 mind so that it focuses on what you're up to creating. What would you like to create? And you can make it as if the sky's the limit. And, you know, just go for it. And let me give you some examples. Uh, I meet and marry my true soulmate, and we have a totally fulfilling uh, family life. Or I have an uh, amazing love relationship with a guy who meets the calling of my heart. Oh, I love that. Where I meet a man who is just right for me and we live a life of joy, fulfillment, and service to the world. I love that one too. Yeah, that's incredible. I, we only have a few moments left before we take a break. So yeah. tell us quickly one more thing and then tell us about your incredible new free course coming up, Find Mr. Right Today. Yes, well, that is the third thing. Get yourself signed up for Find Mr. Right okay. Today. It's a free course and I'm doing it directly on my Facebook page and uh, Dr. Allen, you're going to put the link down below I in will. the um, comment section of Facebook and also uh, wherever else you guys are listening to this or watching this. And uh, yeah, so get yourself uh, mentoring, get yourself some coaching. It's not that easy to find Mr. Wright these days. So, you know, you have to get that kind of input, you know, and give yourself that gift, really give yourself that gift. Yeah, that's powerful. And I think it all, again, for me, it starts with loving yourself, feeling good in your skin, knowing who you are, mm -hmm. not settling, not thinking you're going to like fix some guy or you're going to get him to love you, but, and also just putting yourself out there, whether you do it on an app, I think it's, you have to send that 
that, you know, energy out to the universe that I'm looking for somebody, I'm available, I am worthy. And if you are struggling, I would say, check it out, either get Diane's book and or the free course. I will have the information in the show notes for that and, or get her book, Love in 90 Days, which really, really worked for me. Super. It, it really does work. It is so incredibly powerful. So we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we are going to be talking with Alicia Sheftone, who is going to tell us how she actually started all new business. She kept her consulting CEO job by day, but then she actually became a pop-up chef and cookbook author. And she's going to tell us some of her secret sauce for keeping her 22-year marriage alive. Stick with us. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to Rock Your Midlife. Hey, if you want to get in touch with me, just go over to midlifewhisper.com. That's midlifewhisper.com. And if you want to take Dr. Diana's class, find Mr. Right today, check out the show notes. It is below. And now we are going to be uh, switching gears a little bit, talking to Alicia Chevatone, and she is CEO of a consulting firm by day. She followed her passion at the age of 49 to moonlight as a pop-up chef and cookbook author. In the span of just 18 months, she made it to the Las Vegas Strip, hosting events and securing a standing spot as the in-house chef on Fox 5's More Show, which is the highest rated lifestyle show in Southern Nevada. She is now a pop-up chef. She's a cookbook author. She's a television personality, and she is creator of Dink Cuisine. And Dink stands for Dual Income No Kids. And she is a food, it's a food and entertainment organization that curates culinary experiences across print, digital, social, and live media. Welcome to Rock Your Midlife, Alicia. So awesome to have you here. Thanks, Dr. Ellen. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. So before you're very welcome, before we launch into your story and how you wrote three cookbooks in a year and how you can help couples keep romance alive, I know you've got a question for Dr. Diana. Well, I do. And, you know, I am just sort of curious, you know, putting out a, a cookbook or putting out a book in general is not for the for the faint of heart. And <laughs> I, I was curious, Dr. Diana, what, what made you decide to publish and, uh, you know, put a book out and start writing? Well, it was well past midlife when I wrote that book, and I uh, really felt it's actually like a calling. I, honestly, I was at a yoga workshop, and the leader said, you know, you all want to be doing what is the deepest calling of your heart, and I burst into tears, and I had this experience of millions of people asking me to find love, and, 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 and then what was really strange after I said yes to it an agent contacted me, <laughs> a wow. book agent contacted me. I was, on, I was on the radio. I was on the radio with some women who had used my work to find Mr. Wright, right? And she contacted me and she helped me put the proposal together. <laughs> and she sold it at auction. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it's such Thank a great you. example, whether it's dating or, you know, being a writer or starting a business, when you put the intention out there, when you first connect with your passion and your purpose, what you love to do, and you put it out there like universe, I have no idea of the how, but this is what I love. Doors do open. Yeah, absolutely open. All you have to do is have a little willingness. Just yeah. have a little willingness. It doesn't have to be much. Or you could be willing to be willing. <laughs> and then the doors open like crazy. Yeah, it's a, it is it is an amazing thing. So let's talk about your story. So how did you go from CEO of a consulting firm and, and writing, to writing three cookbooks in a year and then starting this whole Dink Cuisine? Well, I uh, reserved my domain for my website in 2017, dinkcuisine.com, with the intention of writing, you know, recipes for two and, and blogging and, you know, just kind of connecting with people who uh, have households of two people. And when you are, a, you know, a food person, if you're into recipes, if you're into cooking, 
you're really bombarded with people that have big families. You know, you watch the Food Network, nothing against the Food Network. I have it on constantly, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, I have a ranch, I have a farm, you know, I've got mm -hmm. 10 kids, I've got, you know, and it's no one was really speaking for me. I, at the time we were living in San Diego, I uh, had a very urban life, you know, me and my husband, it was just the two of us and we'd be out all the time. But I had, you know, we lived on the fourth floor of a beautiful mid-rise condo complex out looking, you know, to the harbor, um, Marina District in San Diego. But we were lived in 1,100 square feet. I mean, our kitchen was basically the size of a postage stamp. So, you know, you, you also watch some of these cooking shows and, you know, you see people in these gigantic kitchens and they have just unlimited resources and space and they've got, you know, the KitchenAid mixer and stuff. And I'm thinking like, I can, I barely even have a pantry, you know? So I just kind of wanted to be the voice of, um, you know, a, a, a different experience, people that had more of an urban lifestyle and dynamics uh, for two. So I started Dink Cuisine. Um, once the pandemic hit, I had a, a lot of time on my hands, you know, even though I reserved the, the domain, I just, I really didn't know how to start. I mean, it sounded like a good idea. I just had no idea how I was going to execute it. And I wasn't a technical person. But once the pandemic hit, I just um, decided, you know what, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to ask for help for some of my friends. I had a friend who's just a wizard marketing who's, who had worked for me in the past. And she's like, absolutely, I'll build your website for you. You know, what do you, what's the aesthetic? Like, what are you looking for? And so wouldn't even let me pay her. Uh, you know, she's just a great friend, um, but I actually had to ask for that help. I had to get started somewhere. And one of the things I did was, hey, I'm going to figure out, all this technical stuff, and I'm going to start learning how to upload recipes myself. So once I started doing that, I had never been on social media before. So the next oh, wow. step was, I'm going to get on social media, and because people got to know about my website, like I'm, you know, how else are they going to know about me? But so you're so good on air. So I've watched some of your, you know, I'm a <laughs> media train. I've been in front of lots of people. Have a rate, but you like, were you natural, or did it take some work for you to get to that point where being on social media and then you know being on a television show, all of those things? Did yeah. you get some training, or was that something that you're just like, wow, I, I'm good at this? You know, Dr. Ellen, I'm just a ham. I'm just a ham. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I acted. There's nothing um, wrong with that. Uh, That's great all the way through high school, like I was, you know, I was in plays from a really, really young age and stuff. And just, that was my passion. That's what I really loved, you know, was just kind of being goofy and, and acting and stuff. And so that gave me an out, an outlet to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, that, that was real fun. Yeah. Well, it shows you are, I clearly mm -hmm. love what you do and you've got a lot of passion for it and a lovely energy. If you haven't seen her, she's got some great videos, both on YouTube and also on the dinkcuisine.com. So let's talk a little bit about love because it's kind of the theme of today's show. So how have you been happily married for 22 years and how has your life as a childless couple shaped your life? Um, you know, I will say it, it was being very honest about our priorities you know, I mean, the, the man that I married, his name is Mark, uh, is the same man that I married. And I, and I, and we, what makes me really, really sad is when I hear from people, particularly women, you know, that the reason why they got a divorce is because their spouse changed and, and men for that matter too. It's like, Hey, you know, we were kind of going down this path we thought we were growing together, but like, you know, it just took a, it took a turn. Um, one thing I will say is that Mark and I, um, have grown together. We've matured together and our paths never diverged, um, which I feel very fortunate for that. I, I, I don't necessarily know that I can pinpoint a reason, but I can tell you that the things that we love doing, you know, back in the nineties are the same things we love doing now. You know, we love going out to, you know, find food, you know, we go out and have drinks together. We socialize with our friends, you know, Mark still watches football every Sunday, um, Monday nights, Thursday nights, yeah, he's watching NFL. And I resisted it at the time, um, <clears throat> particularly when I was younger and I just hadn't really matured yet to appreciate that the things that he does are the things that he enjoys um, doing and I'm more than welcome to come if I enjoyed it. Great. But don't ruin his time, number one. Number two, um, as he does those things, he comes back to me as a more complete person and less distracted. So I learned to embrace those things. And, you know, in some cases, I actually think that took over 10 years. And I'm, you think I would be embarrassed to say that, but I actually had to grow during that time to appreciate the man that he was and how honest he was at the time that, listen, if those were things that I couldn't handle, cause I felt like it was stealing away from my time with him, that it probably wasn't going to work. Um, and meanwhile, 
enter the Dink Cuisine years and he he will go paint he will go do whatever he needs to do sometimes just to get out of my way so that i can focus or i can write my next cookbook or i can work on a recipe um sometimes we don't need to be together to do everything but you know those are some of the secrets i i you know i just am really really lucky that he's a fun guy i'm i'm pretty fun too yeah well it's great <laughs> so what i'm hearing is you guys you still have so much in common and you're you're really yeah. putting a lot of energy in the relationship but one thing that i found at midlife with Kenny and I is that, you know, distance, you know, it, distance or spending time apart doing your own things actually in, improves the relationship. Your heart grows fonder. Like we're thinking now, like Kenny has to go um, to Austin to do some work. I'm going with him the first time and I'm like, you know what? I'll stay home. Yeah. You know, I think it's actually good to have your own separate passions and interests. I know in my marriage, we did like so much together and I didn't develop enough of myself outside the marriage. I kind of lost myself and always felt like it had to be like him and the kids. And now, you know, we both are very conscious. Yeah. yeah. He likes sports and he's more into the gardening than me. I'll help him weed and I'll pick things. And I'm, I love curating and, and cooking all the food because he can't cook very well. Um, but you know, we do, it's really important if you're listening, if you're in that long-term relationship, it's really important to create life outside the relationship and then also really nourish that relationship. And I also love what you said about having fun together and also doing things with other couples, doing things with other couples, other people, you see your spouse in a new way, mm -hmm. right? When you see them with other people interacting, you appreciate them like, wow, what a cool guy. Like, so you, and you've got to keep it new. Like we're traveling, like we are going to Austin and then we're going to um, Quebec city in Canada. And then we're going to Costa Rica. And that, even though we've only been together like two and a half years, keeps it fresh and alive. You've got to like, you know, work on it, but in a fun way. So let's talk a little bit too. I know that the focus of your book is cooking with somebody else, like cooking for two. How does cooking for two increase connection and intimacy and fun? Yeah, well, actually, that's a really interesting take on my book. I didn't write it for that to be cooking with other people. I, I tend to cook um, in a very relaxed way with my husband kind of coming in and out. So it, it's not like we're actually, you know, he's chopping, and he's got his job and I got my job. I think for us um, and for me, you know, when, when I write my recipes, it's more about the end result, right? And it's working towards having all of your ingredients having a calm environment in your house or wherever you happen to be cooking outside on the grill, wherever it is, um, where you're working towards something that you're really going to enjoy at the end. And for me, that means slowing down. I think when people cook, um, whether they're cooking by themselves or they're cooking with their mom or, you know, no matter what the dynamic is, dynamic is with your roommate, there's just this pressure and it's like, okay, you know, we've got, we've got everything and I'm looking at the recipe and I want to do it properly and I want to get it done because I'm hungry. So I really, um, I think one of the, the best dynamics that I have with Mark is when we're so relaxed, you know, we're having a glass of wine, the TV's on, you know, we're watching baseball, what, whatever's going on that it's, you just, let's, let's leave all that pressure aside and just, it happens as it happens. If if the pot starts to boil too soon and I'm not ready to drop my pasta yet, I take that pot off the stove and I, I wait until I'm ready. And so it's very much, and I, I guess there's parallels in life, you know, when, when you think about that sort of model. But um, I just, I don't think that anybody needs added pressure just to be able to cook or to cook together. Um, and, and to, to have fun, food, right? Yeah. It, cooking yeah, should be, and I always, I feel like cooking is like reading. Yes. It's a skill that most people should have, but people yeah. have different love of doing it and different skill sets. But the point is to enjoy, you know, if you're cooking together to enjoy each other's company, I'm, I'm super lucky because, because Kenny likes to chop and he's an engineer. So he'll do like everything perfectly and he'll take it. Whatever <laughs> I tell him to do, he just does. And then he grows all this incredible food. So it's just been a really, from date, date one, it's just been a really nice way for us to communicate and get along and have fun. So I'm, I'm, you gave me a question that I love, you know, when you look at Instagram, you know, I, I have this love hate relationship with Instagram. We're all supposed to like look perfect. And if you're food styling <laughs> and I saw we are, you know, you have these beautiful pictures, but from the outside, yeah. looking at your Instagram pictures, you know, you're seeing everything and the, on the Las Vegas trip, your life looks perfect, but I'd imagine you have challenges like everybody else. So what do you struggle with? 
And you know, what does your food really look like at home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do tend to, well, because everything I make, I, I usually post. So I'll plate it nicely and take the picture and then I just, you know, devour it. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that, um, I've, I've had self-doubt, you know, ever since I was a kid. I mean, you know, my husband and I talk a lot about the imposter theory. You know, it's always like, hey, you know, what if people are going to figure out that, you know, what I'm doing isn't really that hard? It's really not that hard, you know, and I know it, it looks really, really pretty and stuff, but I work at it. Um, but, you know, I have a lot of negative talk in my head, you know, uh, as I shouldn't have eaten that, you know, it's like, God, I really thought I would have lost 10 more pounds by now. It's like, boy, you know what, there's, there's other, you know, chefs that have gone to culinary school and, um, you know, I didn't, I, I went to law school, you know, I just, you know, <laughs> you, you always, uh, I, I, not you, I just I think it's very natural to sort of have those doubts about what you're doing and just always question things. But I think to turn that around into a positive, it's the questioning and it's the yearning and the seeking that always makes me strive to be better. So I try to turn that negative talk really into something positive. But I, I will say too, you know, you talk about being on the Las Vegas Strip and that was definitely a highlight of my career, you know, of everything, anything I've ever done. But I will say that uh, one of my secrets is to plan privately and execute publicly. So if you plan privately, for me, that means, hey, by the time you see it out there, it's 90% going to happen or it's it's already in flight there's things that are booked there's things that are happening i can make a big hype about it because it's already it's already real but i think how people get paralyzed is because they they make their planning and their 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 desires and their goals very public too soon because mm. then other people start asking a bunch of questions because they're excited for you but they also want to know, how are you tracking towards that? You know, they're, they're trying to hold you accountable and do all the things that, you know, you know, professionals say that you got to do, right? But the problem is with that is that you're not going at your own pace and people try to rush the process. So for me, a lot of it is, you know, you, you, it's all social media, it's all looks great, it's all hyped up, but there's a lot of planning that happens in private where no one knows what I'm doing and it's mine. It's, it's something that I can mold and massage until I'm ready for everybody else to kind of see like, okay, I'm ready to consume it now. What's Alicia doing now? You know? Um, but I love that. That's that sort of me. kind of goes back to what you know, we were saying about manifesting and doing things behind the scenes and doing yeah. that inner work. And I love that, you know, on the one hand, you're like, well, gee, I'm not, you know, I didn't go to go to Culinary Institute of America and I'm kind of picking up the food styling piece. But you, on the flip side, you know, you've been CEO of a consulting firm. You went to law school. So you, you bring all of these other skills that I, what I, my sense is, and we're just starting to, you know, get to know each other here. But you have a lot of, you like yourself. You have a lot of confidence. You're doing, you're following your passion. And I think if we follow our passion, of course, we're going to make mistakes. You're going to like, just like Dr. Diana saying, you're going to have some dead dates. Like my date with, you know, burrito guy, it was like worse than, <laughs> it was worse than root canal, but you know, it showed me about how wonderful Kenny is. And I've made so many mistakes in my life. And he just, if you stay in your lane and what you're good at, and I love that idea of just don't be too public about what you're doing yeah. because people come in and they can kind of harsh your marshmallow in terms of, you know, you know, burn that marshmallow so you don't get the perfect some more. So, um, so you have two careers. So a tough question, which is more important and how do you juggle if someone's listening going, yeah, I really want to write that cookbook. I want to start that business. Maybe I want to, you know, do some coaching on the side or whatever it is. How do you juggle the two and which is more important? How do you find that balance? Well, you know, I think it all comes down to financial stability. You know, um, you know, my day job is is still the bread and butter that, you know, um, allows me to do the stuff that I'm doing for fun on the side. I mean, um, I, I think it's about balance. And I think a lot of times people want, they want it all. You know, they, they, they are um, choosing things that are conflicting. It's very, I'm very lucky that what I do um, for Dink Cuisine and being a pop-up chef, my events are all at night or on, they're on the weekends. So my day job can stay my day job, even though it's a 24 seven job. I mean, I'm checking email like at, you know, midnight before I go to bed. Um, and I do absolutely the wrong thing. I've got that bad tech hygiene, you know, you're not supposed to have your, 
your tech on your nightstand. It's like, no, I don't listen to that. Um, <laughs> but, but I do think that it's, um, it is very much about balance. I think if you choose something that, um, where, where it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive and they can, they can interact together and to be able to have the support of my board of directors, for example, and my colleagues and everybody that reports to me for them to understand that, you know, just like when I was talking about when I was dating Mark, you know, in the nineties, I come as a full package as a full, you know, leader and business person because I have a well-rounded life and because mm -hmm. I have a really, really good life. And that makes me more able to connect to people. It makes me more patient. Um, and I'm not naturally a very patient person, by the way. <laughs> so some of the things that I've, I've cultivated, um, and it took me until I was 49 years old to be able to find this, to, to carve this out for myself. I think it's done, you know, a, a, a really wealth of good for me in my professional life. So if I had to choose between one or the other, I don't know. That'd, that'd be super, super hard. I, I probably would say until I retire, it's probably the day job that, you know, maybe Dink Cuisine would have to go to the side just because I have a big responsibility and I've got, you know, people that work for my company and, you know, I owe them everything. I, I owe them my best. Um, so that's just not my life. My, my Dink Cuisine life is pretty much just me and my husband and then everybody that loves to eat my food. But, um, but Dink's, uh, my other day job is really important. Yeah, but it's nice to have both, like you said. So you've got mm -hmm. the financial, you know, I always tell people if you're going for that, um, you know, side hustle that you want to do, don't quit your day job because yeah. the mm -hmm. worst thing you want to do nice. is that when you, I see it all the time, people are like, I'm going to quit my day job. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden their passion, like you had with Dink Cuisine mm -hmm. becomes a stressful thing because you've got to make you buck on yeah. that. And what I'm hearing from you is it's my, it's, it's not, it's not exactly a hobby, you know, like you're making money and you're putting yourself yeah. out there and it's growing and you're reaching people and helping people and it's fun, mm -hmm. but you know, you don't have to worry about it being the bottom line for you. And on the flip side, I'm sure all of the skills you have as a CEO are coming into play and really helping you with your business, probably even more than if you had culinary skills. Well, that's where, you know, you started off <clears throat> talking about fearlessness. And I, I do, I do think that, you know, being in business for, you know, 23 years, you know, working as a, as a corporate person, um, really built that callus for me in asking for things, so particularly being in sales. And you know, so I I kind of came up through through sales. And um, you know, you you do, you, you, you get very used to asking for things and compelling people to do things. And when they say no, it's okay because it just means no right now. So you're just gonna keep pushing forward. You know, you still have a quota to get to, you still got things that you need to do. Um, and I very much have been able to apply that. And I think that part of the reason why I've been so successful in such a short period of time is because I'm taking time to get to know people and what other people do, but I'm also pushing those limits and I'm, I'm not afraid to ask for stuff. And it's just amazes me what people have said yes to. I'm like, again, imposter theory. I think maybe if they found out who I really am, then they wouldn't. <laughs> Posture theory is interesting, but I don't know. I sense that you're you're very authentic, and I love I like everything that you're sharing. That you're following your <laughs> passions, that you you know have a little sense of maybe wondering what people think about what you're doing. But I loved also what you said too about a well-rounded life. And, you know, and you made the decision not to have kids, which I totally honor. That kids take up a lot of resources, but you've got your husband and you've got your CEO career and you've got this creative passion, which I know you were, you, when you wrote to me initially, like you didn't realize just how creative you were yeah. and where this would all lead. Well, it's true. And that was always a very binary thing for me. You know, you're either a creative person. So meaning to me and my narrow view at the time was like, okay, you're a musician or you're an artist, you know, which my husband is both of those things <laughs> or you're a professional. And it was like, never, you know, do the two intersect. And I just, it took me a while to realize. And again, social media really helped me in this because people started seeing what I was doing and they're like, wow, that's really creative. And I'm like, huh, I'm creative? Like I had no idea, you know, I had no, I had no clue because I was such in this business box. Um, it's so, so corporate that I, I really didn't view myself. And as soon as my self-perception changed, then I started presenting myself creatively. So it was, it was a process of recognizing that in myself, having that epiphany, and then presenting myself differently. And then it sort of, it cascaded from there. So 
yeah, that was that was a real eye opener for me. Yeah, it's an important thing to realize. And if people listening, everybody's creative. You make everybody's a peanut creative. butter and jelly sandwich, you're creative, yes. right? You right. redecorate. But we always think this idea, and I know I had this because my my sister is a is a award-winning artist. And I always, I mean, and she's won Emmy awards for her films and she teaches at like art school and all kinds of things. I was like, oh, that's what creativity looks like. But, you know, doing this show, writing my books, all of us are creative. Oh, yeah. So we have a couple minutes left. I want to make sure to have Dr. Diane have an opportunity because I know she's brimming with a question. Dr. Diana, do you have a question for Alicia? Yes. What is the sexiest meal that a couple can cook together, you think? <laughs> Wow, I have never been <clears throat> asked that question before. Um, I would probably say uh, some sort of tapas, you know, something that you could eat with your hands. Yeah. Where you could feed each other. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I love I love little um, crostini, you know, little, 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 you know, baguette that you, you bake until they're crispy and sort of dipping them in things. And, and you know, I think there's something very, very mm. uh, sensual about eating with your hands. I um, love that. Yeah, so, you yeah. can feed each other. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you know, cooking and making love are very similar. You know, use all the same senses, your sense of smell, your sense of taste, your sense mm -hmm. of touch. But I think it's also such a great way to play and not take yourself seriously like Alicia just said it's like it's not about perfection it might a lot goes into it looking perfect on instagram but like when i'm with my husband it's just all about like in you know if the pot's gonna boil over and we're not ready for it yet then we can just wait and I'm, we always put on music and i don't know we're always inspired by what's happening in the garden and it's just cooking with your love and also it's a great way to take care of each other too yeah oh, um, show each other love yeah, abs absolutely. So speaking of love, I want to, Dr. Diane, tell us quickly about your course. I will say again, oh, the the information, if you are watching on Facebook, it is in the comments. And if you are uh, looking, look to the notes, you'll see the link to do Dr. Diana's class. It's going to be three days. It is called, Dr. Diana? Find Mr. Wright today. I am so excited about this. This is totally live. It's going to be three days. And we, you know, I, it's designed to really blow your mind. It's how to spot a disappointing guy, you know, before he breaks your heart. It's how to have it raining men. Very specific stuff. And I'll tell you, this is my best stuff and it all works. So definitely get yourselves enrolled and find Mr. Wright today. It starts November 16th. You can sign up today and then you'll be in the know on everything. We'll, we'll keep you up to date on everything that's going to happen and you will love it. Yeah. And 2023 is right around the corner. And so thinking about yeah. what 2023 yeah. is going to yeah. look like, and I am here to say that living proof that Dr. Diana's program absolutely does work. And regardless of your age and you're thinking, yeah. oh my God, I'm not yeah. you know, smart enough, pretty enough, whatever. That's all total BS stories you are telling yourself. And she is yeah. going to, she's so much fun and you're going to love it. <laughs> so check that out. And Alicia, where can people find you? Oh, I'd love uh, for people to check out my website, dinkcuisine.com, D-I-N-K cuisine.com. Uh, they can also follow me on social media on Instagram. And I've got a Facebook group called The Dinkdom, uh, D-I-N-K-D-O-M. Oh, cool. So I have exclusive content on The Dinkdom where, you know, I give out recipes of things that I may post on Instagram, but I don't tell people how to make it. Um, and it's really just to sort of have that, you know, real great experience where I'm connecting with my fans. And um, so, yeah, I would love for people to follow me. And also if you're in Las Vegas, uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week is um, <clears throat> November 14th through the 20th. And I'm hosting the kickoff party at uh, Sahara Las Vegas, which is a strip property. They just celebrated their 70th anniversary. So it's one of the most iconic properties on the strip. So we're going to be celebrating food and beverage entrepreneurs and actually business owners of all size uh, from five to seven. Uh, all right. November awesome. 14th. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for listening, Diane, Dr. Diana, Alicia. Thank you for being here. Thank you all so much. I hope you had fun. You learned something new and really make love happen because love is really the energy that lights up the whole universe and you can have as much love and it all starts with loving yourself. So thanks again. Check me out on the midlifewhisperer.com. That's the midlifewhisperer.com and I'll catch you in the next episode.